And then can you talk a little bit about patchless patients where you might see concavity or you might see that, you know, yellowing, like that yellowish defect where you're maybe seeing some of the fat underneath the mucosa? Right. Uh, before we leave uh, the barrel challenge, so when we were talking about the patient's got a barrel challenge history, you look at the TM and the tympanogram, it's all normal uh, because they're not flying. It's that band of redundant mucosa that I'm looking for on the endoscopy to help clinch the diagnosis. Now, in contrast, a patchless eustachian tube, if they've actively got symptoms, you have to be able to, you will see a defect in the valve. There's going to be a chink in the valve somewhere. It's usually on the membranous wall, the membranous side. The more common defect is going to be typically right at the roof, the 12 o'clock position. They've got a defective lateral cartilaginous lamina. It usually has a little triangular point that sticks into the lumen and helps close the valve at the very top where the mucosa is very thin. And if that's deficient, then uh, that's a really common location for the defect. Less commonly, or, or in conjunction with that, you can have a, a, a concavity in the whole membranous wall. And that's where they're missing a lot of the fat, the osmond's fat that occupies much of the membranous wall. If, you, uh, if you've got mucosal, submucosal atrophy, then you'll see the yellow of the osmond's fat. The more severe cases, the fat's disappearing or gone, and you, you look at the membranous wall, and you're just seeing the, the naked tensor veli palatini muscle mm -hmm. with a little strip of fat separating that from the floor uh, where the levator veli palatini muscle. So you can see these two red muscles, the levator in the floor, the tensor in the membranous wall, a little strip of Osman's fat, and this big concave defect in the membranous wall. So it's some kind of concavity. A tympanic membrane exam that is consistent with obstruction. So maybe you see, you know, retraction or fluid and they can't lateralize with a modified Valsalva, kind of your classic patient history of tubes. And then you look in the back of the nose and it looks more patchless than it looks inflamed. Is the idea that maybe the the disease is just kind of in that deeper one third of the eustachian tube that you just can't see very well? It certainly could be. So in that patient, I would want to make sure that they're not doing the inappropriate nasal uh, uh, sniffing, that they don't, uh, they, there's no patchless history, no autophony, no sniffing to cause that. And um, yeah, typically these patients, uh, very commonly, they get middle ear fusion every time the tube comes out. Uh, so yes, I, uh, we do find that they have a, an obstruction higher in the valve than you can actually see. And those are the ones it may be a scar band left over from uh, past infection, and they can even be obstructed in the bony eustachian tube. Now, uh, that's about maybe 10% of our obstructive eustachian tube dysfunction may be in that category. They may have a problem in the bony portion. Uh, so the way to diagnose that is at a time when they don't have an effusion, typically they've got a tube, that's the time to get a CT. And if you see soft tissue density in the bony eustachian tube, that's telling you that's where the problem is. And then you have to decide, well, how do we get to that?